as midwives, we're very fortunate to be part of looking after women during their pregnancy. It's a happy time, it's a fun time, or it should be. But it's not always that case for every woman. We see women from all walks of lives, from all different angles of social aspects. And it's important to recognise that women always haven't had an easy journey to get to where they are on the booking interview with us as midwives. Some women have struggled for countless years to become pregnant and that emotional impact on them is very trying, very testing and doesn't always make pregnancy a happy thing. It's important for us as health professionals to acknowledge that some women aren't always overjoyed to be pregnant because they are fraught with anxiety on how they're going to get to the end of the pregnancy. Having encountered years of IVF, infertility, pregnancy loss, we need to acknowledge this with these women. It's important that we individualise our care and that we offer extra support and as when is needed. We won't always know when that is. We should be guided by the woman and the woman will tell us. I've been fortunate enough to look after women in pregnancy um, from the very beginning as a community midwife or on an, on an ad hoc basis when they've come into hospital for an admission. I currently work on an obstetric unit within the hospital, but when I was a community midwife, I was fortunate enough to look after one particular lady who stands out in my mind as having gone through a horrendous time to conceive her now beautiful twins and to finish the journey that she was on. I'd like to think that I played a little part in helping her through that journey. And if I can give you an example of what I did, it may well help you to try and provide the best care for women. We have to individualise care. We are structured and governed by NICE. We have time scales, limits, appointment scales in which we have to abide to. But I think we can sway this somewhat when we're looking after these individual women who are fraught with anxiety. The emotional impact on them is something that we will never acknowledge totally and we will never appreciate and we can't honestly empathise with. Sometimes when we see these women, it might be just a hand on a shoulder or a hand on a knee to tell them that everything is okay. In the current climate with COVID, we're not able to do that. So how would we adapt our practice in order to make them feel okay, in order to make them know that we are listening to them? I believe I was on a quick dial with my past patient. Whenever she needed me, she'd phone. And sometimes it was only a phone call that was needed. I did see her more than your regular low-risk pregnancy patient, and that was absolutely fine. I'm sure that some days she felt I did an awful lot to help her when I would think it was nothing, but it was just a small word or an acknowledgement of a feeling to ease the emotional stress. And I think it honestly helps. These women battle anxiety for the duration of their pregnancy. And we must bear in mind that they know they're pregnant earlier than any other woman will find that blue line on a stick. They have gone through the conception process in meticulous fashion to obtain the pregnancy that they are carrying. And we need to ensure that emotionally we keep these women well, because if we don't, their emotional strain is going to have an impact on their physical well-being. Many of the ladies that we look after will come with predisposing medical conditions anyway. Take diabetes, for an example. If we leave these women wander and battle through their pregnancy with a very strict regime of visits that we have, I believe that that emotional and that anxious state will definitely impact on our diabetic mothers. It will have an impact on their blood sugars and how stable they are. We're all very good with working with our hands, touching a woman, palpating an abdomen, taking a blood pressure, dipsticking at you then. They're not interested in any of that. We may be, 
But for them, they want to hear that fetal heart. They want acknowledgement that everything is okay. And they sometimes just want that very friendly ear to listen to them. Continuity of care, I think, is paramount with these women. Myself, I was fortunate to work in a nice community team where we got to know our women very well and we were able to see them on a regular fashion. Antenatal clinics in the hospital, I appreciate, are different. However, the women with the high-risk pregnancies, I believe, should have the same consultant, stroke registrar, for every appointment. That way, you build up a rapport with the women, you get to know them. And I knew when my particular lady, lady would come to clinic, I knew if my appointment was going to be a 15-minute one or a 50-minute one. Her face, her demeanour and her manner would tell me that because I knew her and I think it's important that we get to know them. We are restricted in how much we can get to see these ladies and how much time that we can get to spend with them, but you have to be tuned in to them. Tune in to what they need, appreciate the emotional strain they're under, appreciate the anxiety that they are struggling with on an hourly basis, not day by day, it's constant. You listen to that fetal heart at two o'clock, by three o'clock they're wondering if that baby is still kicking around and living in there. Appreciate that, it's extremely important. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs>